Okay, so now that I got you thinking about the continents on the Earth's surface and how over time they've changed their position and bumped into each other, and I've given you this task, second graders, to look at maps and look at places where continents might have sort of bumped into each other or pulled apart or shifted. I want you to study some maps. And if you don't have paper maps at home, go ahead and go to Google Maps. And I'm going to walk you through using Google Maps a little bit. Um, I'm working on my laptop here, which is easier for me in a way because then I can, I can use my cursor. But maybe you're working on an iPad. It's fine. In order to get to Maps, it's very easy from my Google Splash page here. I just type in Maps. It takes me to Google Maps really quickly. And you end up with a screen sort of like this where it might show um, somewhere close to where you are right now. And it might show um, a map that could you could see all the roads and some different colors that would indicate the different cities or the whether it's a parkland, that kind of thing. But what I want to point out here is Right here, there's a little option to go to a satellite view. So if I want to go to a satellite view, if I press that button, it gives me, these are actual photographs of the Earth's surface from space. And Google has taken all these pictures and sort of webbed them all together, latched them all together like big puzzle pieces so that we can look at these photographs of the Earth's surface from space on our computer. And the nice thing here is I can search anywhere in the world, anywhere on planet Earth. So since we were talking about Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world, I'm going to type in Everest and press Enter in my search there. And it takes me right to the peak of Mount Everest there. You see that? Right here. There's Mount Everest. So now I can see um, I've come, I've, I'm sort of close here. And so I can actually see the angle that the sun is hitting Mount Everest. I can see the part of Mount Everest that is in the shade. I can sort of see these these different places where there are glaciers. You can see these kind of ripples here um, on the snow and ice that indicates that it's a glacier. Remember we talked about glaciers in that other video? And when I move my fingers to scroll out, using my two finger scroll here, I can get a view of a larger and larger area where Everest then appears smaller and smaller. So you might wanna go out about this far so that you can then do some searching around on the surface of the earth for other mountain ranges. And I can do that just by dragging, clicking a location and then dragging it. I might wanna go further out here. Another mountain range that I'm really um, interested in and familiar with is over in North America. So I'm gonna sort of drag, as I drag along the planet earth here, I can see different angles on the globe. And now I can go in and I can look at, take a look at the west coast of North America. You'll see that there's sort of this line that goes up and down here between a more green area and a more brown area. And what that means is that the green area is generally wetter, gets more rain. Because it gets more rain, more trees grow there, and so it appears in a photograph more green. And the more brown area here is an area that gets less rain, and so the types of plants that grow there aren't as big, and they don't have as big uh, leafy green surface areas, and so from space they appear browner in color. It's a drier area. So why would there be this line here between wet and dry? Well, there's a mountain range. So if I get a little closer, I can see these sort of wrinkles 
in the Earth's surface that indicate rivers running off the mountain range. Right there is a mountain that has um, snow and ice on it. Mount Jefferson, that's in Oregon. So then maybe I will make a few notes about that. There's a mountain range called the Cascades that includes a mount call, mountain called Mount Jefferson. Pay attention to the names and the locations. And remember, you're looking at this through the lens of, well, what happened to form these different continents the way that we know it today? So here at Japan, one thing I like about looking at the islands is that you can also see what it looks like underwater. One of the biggest mountains in the world, actually, as measured from the bottom of the ocean, is the island of Hawaii. So at Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world um, as measured from sort of sea level, but the island of Hawaii is considered the biggest mountain in the world, I think, as measured from the bottom of the ocean. So that's really interesting to me. It's a volcanic mountain and it has formed this chain of islands here. So as you explore the sort of landforms on the earth, I want you to be thinking about which one of those landforms happened sort of quickly and which ones may have happened more slowly over time. You might remember in the video I showed earlier how it shows India smashing into Eurasia and wrinkling up where they smashed together to form that tall mountain range of, that includes Mount Everest. But it's important to know that's something that took place over many millions of years. Are there any landforms you can think of that occur very quickly? Maybe our next time together, we'll look at some of those types. Meanwhile, I hope you have fun exploring Google Maps and uh, finding the different sort of tools that are available to you on Maps. And also, uh, I look forward to next time we gather to talk more about landforms that change quickly versus landforms that change more slowly. Take care, second graders.